In most of these videos, I speak about why we were created. We were created to be made in the image or the likeness of our Creator. We are to become as He is. He gave us instructions to follow to accomplish this, but most who have ever lived have rejected His instructions. Included in His instructions is the path that leads to Him and His Son living in us through His seven spirits that teaches His character. I've spoken in other segments why He had to create us with free will in order to accomplish the final product of making us, making us in His image. Today I want to talk a little bit about what the final product is. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in a family where everyone was more interested in the other person's happiness than their own? I have asked several people over the past few years how many servants would you have if everyone in the world was your servant? The answer is obvious. Everyone in the world would be your servant, no matter what the number. The problem is, in order for this to truly work out, we must also be everyone else's servant. There is much more to this than just having a servant's attitude because what good would it be to serve evil? Evil would flourish as well. And actually, evil would prevail because evil would be a sponge off of the good just as it is in the world today. So evil must be purged out if all are going to live in harmony and in love. So we must be able to identify evil in order to purge it out. Most can see obvious evil like murder, but even within the obvious evils in the world, there is so much tolerance today. Homosexuality and adultery and other such abominations run rampant as most of the world turns the other cheek to them. But what about attitudes that we can have with one another, even within our own families? Can evil exist in our attitudes? The answer is yes. If you are building an eternal family that will be a utopia, are you going to allow attitudes that cause division and hurt others in that utopia? Are you going to allow rebellious attitudes in? No, because if you did, it would not be a utopia. In Isaiah 11 we read, The wolf will dwell with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear will feed together, their young ones will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child will play at the den of what used to be a poisonous snake. And the weaned child will put his hand in the once ravenous animal's den for, in safety. And they will not hurt nor destroy in my entire holy mountain, because all of the earth will be full of the knowledge of Yahweh, as the waters, this is the waters that cover the sea. Why isn't the earth full of the knowledge of Yahweh already? It is because they have rejected it. He made it available and the world went their own way. From there he kept making it available through what became the lineage of Abraham so that the world could be blessed through them, but they kept rejecting it as well, all except a small flock. And this small flock became his temple that will reign with him for eternity. And now we have come to the time that all that does not choose to want his righteousness will that, that his righteousness that leads to perfect love will be purged out. So should the person who bites at another's heel be allowed to live into the coming era of time to poison it? Is it his righteousness to snap back at another with an attitude or respond to another in a nasty way? If you are one of those who lives with an attitude, even within your own household, should you be allowed to live so that you can continue to cause strife to others? So often we think that we are good because we don't steal, or we think that we are better than most, or we think that we are righteous because of our beliefs. We think that we are okay without regard to how we treat one another. We have the attitude that nobody is perfect. Well, it just so happens that we are commanded to become perfect. True love is just. This is because what is not just eats away at love. Injustice destroys relationships and it destroys happiness. So it is not just to let attitudes prevail in our midst. If we had hearkened to our Creator's righteousness, He would have taught us that even our attitudes that we have towards one another can be evil. Is the wolf going to be able to dwell with the lamb if the wolf still has an attitude? 
Our Creator is going to heal the nature of the animals, and He is and He wants to heal our nature as well. But with with us, it has to be our choice and our hunger to be healed by Him. His name is the banner of His character. It represents who He is or His righteousness. In Exodus 20, verse 7, you shall not bear the name of Yahweh Elohim in a desolating way, because Yahweh will not make clean or acquit him that bears his name in a desolating way. What does this commandment mean to you? Does it mean that we are simply not to use his name as a curse word? No, it means that we are to bear his character. If we claim to be his children, is it okay for us to rebel against him or even with one another? Rebelling is evil. If a parent asks a child to behave in a certain way and that child refuses and the parent allows for their rebellion, is this love? No, we have to teach our children to not have rebellious hearts and minds. How about if a spouse rebels against the other spouse's desire? Is this love? Is it a servant's heart to do so? Should such attitudes be allowed in his kingdom? They won't be, so we have to purge out such attitudes in ourselves if we have them. People want to argue that we are only human now. Yes, but we are to overcome our nature by following his instructions, and we are to purge out that which is not love. And of course, if we're following his instructions, we have him helping us overcome through his, the power of his spirit. If you have a barking dog, you teach that dog not to bark if you don't want a barking dog. If the dog continues to refuse your correction and continues to bark, do you enjoy that dog? Sadly, the world has become immune to hearing the barking that people are doing to one another. It is commonplace for attitudes to prevail. Most think that the person who rises up against the attitudes of, of others is the bad person because they deem them as intolerable or, tolerable or something like that. I just ask you to ask yourself if you think that rebellious attitudes should be allowed to live into a new era of time when the lion will be laying down with the lamb. And should these hateful attitudes be allowed in his eternal family? Do you think that this is what he is building, a rebellious house? No, he put us here in the flesh so that we would purge out evil from our midst, and this includes within ourselves. This includes teaching our children how to not have rebellious attitudes. And how is a parent going to teach their child not to have a rebellious attitude if they themselves live such attitudes as their example? Our Creator wants us bearing His righteous character. It starts in our households, in ourselves. As we do, it becomes a way of life and His character programs our thinking until we reach a point where we want to be in agreement with His righteousness with all of our being. There is no other way to an eternal utopia. Living his righteousness results in pure love and joy and pure relationships with him and with one another. No one is going to be allowed into his family with poisonous attitudes, so we must purge them out. In Revelation 19, verse 13, Yeshua was clothed with the robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word or the Logos of Elohim. Yeshua was given the name of his Father's Word. His word defines his righteousness. He lived by his father's every word and they both commanded us to do the same. He was his father's word in the flesh and he continues to be his father's word today. He said, follow me, and he was the word of Elohim. We have to follow the word of Elohim to be made in his righteousness. Do you really think that there is some other way, some other more excellent way? It was the topic of yesterday's video. Some of you say that you just need to confess his name with your mouth. This is an abominable lie that came from Saul of Tarsus. I have gone over what the Apostle John said about confessing Yeshua in several of these videos. Briefly, John said that we must be in agreement with the Logos of Yeshua, our Messiah, and his Logos must be coming forth in our flesh. The Greek word that John used that is translated as confess is homo logio. Homo logio means to be in agreement with or at one with the same logos. Of course, his logos must be proceeding from our mouth as well, but speaking it and not doing it is not going to get you eternal life in his Father's kingdom. We must become Yahweh's word and as his Son became his word. In order for this to be accomplished, we must live and breathe it. His word must be a way of life. 
It must become our, na our, our nature, and it must become our name. This is what he means by bearing his name. I've spoken in several of these videos that we are either bearing his name or we're bearing the name of Satan. Satan's name is rebellion to Yahweh's word. We are either in agreement with our Creator's logos and confessing this agreement by what is proceeding forth in our actions, or we are confessing the name of Satan by our actions, what comes out of our mouth. There is no way around this. Rebellious spirits will not be allowed in his kingdom, so we need to purge them out from us. This starts with purging out the spirit that is in us if we have rebellion in our hearts and our minds. This is the basics to repentance. The true programming can not enter into us until we begin to empty out the swill. And our bad attitudes toward one another are swill. If they exist in our households, we have to plead with our families to examine their attitudes and hold them accountable for the damage that they are inflicting on others. Love can also be correction. It is not love to allow others that you love to continue on a path that will lead them to the lake of fire. Love is not accepting evil in our midst, but we also had better be examining our own eyes for our own evil. Love is purging out evil, and it begins with self. And we had better be setting the right examples to others, especially our children. But we do have a responsibility for one another within our families. We are our brother's keeper, and we need to help one another learn to bear our Creator's name, which is His eternal character. That which divides and hurts others is not love. Yesterday I mentioned Saul's definition of love, but I did not go into the details of it. He brought forth a definition that contains some obvious good traits of love, such as being long-suffering or patient and kind with one another, and these things are true. I mentioned that the enemy always mixes in truth with the lies, but there is more to it because it is not love to let evil prevail. And anything that is against our Creator's righteousness is evil. Saul said that love does not rejoice in iniquity, and this is true, yet he taught a path that leads others to iniquity because he did not accept what iniquity is according to our Creator's righteousness. This is true of so many. They measure their righteousness upon their own standard of righteousness and their own standard of right versus wrong and good versus evil. And there's a problem with doing this. Isaiah told us, and Isaiah 64, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all of our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all fall away like a leaf, and the spirit of our iniquities has taken us away. There is none that calls upon your name that has stirred up and stirred himself up it to seize you. Therefore, you have hid your face from us and have dissolved us because of our iniquities. Most worship him in vain because they worship a different name than, than his name. They worship a false image of his name. I'm not talking about the pronunciation of his name. I'm talking about who he is. Most worship a make-believe image of him and a make-believe image of his son. They do not call upon his name in spirit and in truth. They impute their righteousness above his. Therefore, they worship a false Elohim, one that does not exist. And for this reason, he has erased most from being his people. But there is good news. Isaiah went on to say that you can turn to Yahweh to be your father, and you can become his clay. He says that you can return to him and let him be your master potter. This is a, the cry that he is sending forth to you now. He will erase your iniquities by covering them with his son's blood, but you have to turn from your ways and return to the paths of old that the patriarchs walk with him on. It is all about bearing his name and not bearing the enemy's name. It is either one way or the other. There is no middle ground. His name is who he is. If you bear his righteous character falsely, then you are bearing it in a desolating way. You're treading his name underfoot, just as you're treading his son's blood underfoot. His son paved the way, and he said to follow him. Following a make-believe Messiah who did not bear the, the name of the eternal self-existing creator is not going to get you delivered through the coming time of trouble. The reason is a make-believe Messiah has make-believe blood. Yeshua was his father's righteousness in the flesh, and we are commanded to become the same. There is no other way. He is the way, and he is the word of Elohim. If you are following the word of Saul of Tarsus or some other imposter, 
You will soon die in your iniquities. Repent while you still can.